What time is it? It's giving time. And God tells us why we should give and how we should give. In Malachi 3 and 10, God tells us to bring the tithe to the storehouse that his house may have meat. Simply put, that means pay your tithes to support the church. And when you support the church, you're not only helping the church, but you're helping others through the church ministries. Not only that, you will be blessed. But God also say in Malachi 3 and 10 that if you give the way he say give, he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room enough to receive. Don't you want to see the church blessed? Don't you want to be blessed? You can accomplish both by giving. Now to give to this great ministry, simply download the GiveLify app. That's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Again, that's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Go ahead and create that account. Enter the place of worship. Enter the amount you wish to give. Enter that credit card and billing information. Tap that Give Now button and smile when you do it because God loves a cheerful giver. Now, if you do not wish to use the GiveLify app, you can mail your tithes, your offering, or any donation to Greater Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, Zip code 72206. Again, that's Greater Rosa Sharon, Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, zip code 72206. And remember, Greater Rosa Sharon is a 501c3 charitable organization. All your tithes, all your offering, all your donations are tax deductible. Until the next time, this is Deacon Duffy saying God bless you and keep you is my prayer. You are welcome to come and join us here at Greater Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, whether it's live or online. We have our Sunday school worship service at 9 a.m. Once again, it's online or you may come in person, as well as our morning worship service at 10 a.m. You may join us once again live or online with our Facebook account. We also have our uh, midweek service on Monday. We have our morning devotional at 9 a.m. online. And then on Wednesday, we have intercessory prayer online at 12 noon. And also we have our Bible study on Wednesday at 7 p.m., which is also online. You can also catch our repeats on our Facebook account as well as on our YouTube account. Once again, we welcome you to join Greta Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Greater Rose of Sharon Sunday School class. Um, we hope that everyone is being safe. We hope that everyone has had a blessed week. Uh, God has, has kept us for one more day. We have one more opportunity to give him some glory and some honor and some praise. Uh, today is January the 23rd, and we're in lesson number eight for this particular unit. Good morning, everyone. We want to ask everyone to please uh, share our Facebook page with your friends, for especially for morning service, when our pastor will bring the message or, or whichever one of our associate ministers uh, he has given the assignment will bring the message. 
And we just encourage you to join our church each and every Sunday morning for uh, a study of the word of God. Um, we know, of course, that the pandemic is going on, but God is still in control. He has not left us alone. There are those that are going through rough times right now, and we pray that God will bless and keep each and every one of you all. Let us bow our heads this morning for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we bow before you this morning in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity, another chance to praise and to worship you. Master, we ask you to forgive us of our sins. We ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit. We ask you, Lord, to keep us throughout these trying times in the name of Jesus. Master, we pray right now for our pastor, Pastor Cross and his family. We pray right now for all of those that are on our sick and shut-in list. We pray for this city, this state, this country, this nation, Master. We pray for the world, Lord, because there are, there's just so much going on. But, Lord, we know that you are still in control. And we just praise and uplift your holy and magnificent name because you are worthy to be praised. Now, Heavenly Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may say everything that you want us to say. In the name of Jesus, we pray this morning. Amen. All right, you all. It's another good day. Another blessed day just to be here. Uh, our lesson this morning is in unit two, God, the source of justice. The subject of the lesson, incorruptible leaders. Incorruptible. This would be leadership. Could you close that door, please? Thank you. Incorruptible leaders. That would be just leadership. Leaders who allow God's words and commands in all areas. Thank you, sir. In all areas of society, especially in the church. We know that this lesson was giving uh, um, the leaders of Israel. It was reminding them of what God had commanded them to do as they went into Canaan. And it's not just for uh, civil leadership. It's for church leadership. It's for home leadership. So that the world might know that God is still God. It's not leadership for us to look good. It's leadership for us to show who God is. OK, it's not a prop. It's not a popularity thing. It is to show who God is to be an Im image of him on earth. Our devotional reading this morning is from Psalm 46 verses 10 through 11. Our background scriptures this morning are Deuteronomy 16 verses 18 through 20, chapter 17 verses 8 through 13 and chapter 19 verses 15 through 21 and our print passages are Deuteronomy 16 18 through 20 and 17 8 through 13. I would encourage everyone when you get the opportunity to read the 16th 17th the 16th through the 19th chapters of the book of Deuteronomy to get your background uh, on on the laws that the Lord had for the children of Israel. Our key verse says, Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes. And they shall judge the people with just judgment. The Lord is telling us he wants fairness. He wants us to be just. He wants equitable judges, officers, those who will live by the word of God. Just priests, just preachers, just pew members. All of us who have received Jesus Christ as our Savior are to be just in our dealings. And all of us who have received Jesus Christ as our Savior are leaders, whether we are in a position or not. 
because we are an image of the Almighty God. We are supposed to be an example to society as of what God is, of who he is, rather. We're supposed to live our lives as though we serve a God, the one and only Jehovah God. Our lesson aims, discover why God established the roles of judges, officials, and priests, and what these roles entailed. Okay, we should, we should know why God established those roles. Man needed a pathway. Otherwise, the flesh would have done whatever the flesh wanted to do, when it wanted to do it, how it wanted to do it. This was not for man to have his way, but man would justly act or do and judge according to God's way, to know God's way, and know his word. God's roles for man are not for man to have his way, but for us to live God's way. Value persons who make decisions based on God's justice. We need to respect those and we need to respect those that are following the word and the will of God. If you're not sure whether they're doing it or not, respect them anyway. Be kind, be just toward all men, regardless of race, creed, or color. Be kind and be just to all men. Being kind and being just does not make you a coward. Follow God's word. Have, have a humble spirit. That does not make you a coward. Follow the specific will and laws of the Lord. Practice justice in your roles as leaders. As leaders, leaders need to be fair, but sadly, some are not. And we know this, some are not, but there's nothing we can do about it except pray. We can pray, and we can live our lives as though we know who God is. Leadership in high places has have fallen away from God's principles. Decisions that are made nowadays on fairness and justice are based on who's who. Who has money? It's based on the love of power, the love of prestige, who can pay the biggest bribe where you were born, the color of your skin, whether you're male or female. I could go on and on and on about the, the wrong way decisions are made nowadays. Arguments on fairness and equity and justice are for the purpose of arguing and finding ways to not be fair by God's law, but man's law, by man's law. With each argument, man moves further and further away from God's law. Man has figured out a way to add a word or a sentence that moves us away from being just and fair. Man has figured out how to add a punctuation mark or a quotation mark in the law, the, comp, the societal law that moves us further away from God's law and change the meaning of the real law, to change the truth of the law of society. And supposedly the law of society is based on the word of God. But they have figured out a way. Man has figured out a way to move further and further from God's law and God's principles in order to bring about their own agenda. And if my agenda, if our agenda is not according to the will of God, it's not. As simple as that. If it's not according to the will of God and the word of God, it's not. It's not true. The church should be the beacon or the spotlight, the tower, the role model, the leader for God's justice, but sadly, the church has become full of things 
that go contrary to God's word. There is a reckoning day coming for justice. We might, we might as well get ready for it. It's coming for anybody. As they say, say it used to say in the army training, it's coming for Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. It's coming for people in high places. It's coming for people in, in what we deem as low places. It's coming for those that are just and unjust. There is a reckoning day coming. There is a payday coming. All right, in the introduction to our lesson in our book, God sovereignly chose the Israelites and became their supreme ruling authority. God sovereignly chose the Israelites. God has sovereignly chose us as Christians. We just had to accept salvation. Salvation is available to anyone and to everyone who will accept it. Salvation is found in Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, which says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now why do we read the plan of salvation every Sunday? Because there might be somebody listening for the first time who doesn't know the plan of salvation. And it's our purpose as the church. It's our job as the church to make sure everybody knows what the plan of salvation is. It's not for us to get up in front of people and look good, but it's about the spreading of the gospel and letting every man know Every human being know the plan of salvation, the plan of salvation. God delegated the responsibility of managing the people's day-to-day -day affairs to individuals like Moses and Joshua and a succession of prophets and judges, including Samuel. As Samuel aged in his long tenure as prophet and judge, he delegated some responsibility to his sons, Hophni and Phinehas. However, they proved to be corrupt and untrustworthy. They used their positions to profit from unjust gain and perverted justice. Use their positions. People in high places using their positions for the wrong reason. That's unjust. It's not right so far. Those out there and wherever you are that may be using your position for the wrong reason, that's unjust. It's unjust. It's not right. Their behavior contradicted and undermined Samuel's exemplary leadership. Israel's elders confronted Samuel and requested a king to rule over them like the other nations. This request was the beginning of a radical change in the structure of their civil affairs. Okay, let's go back. Samuel's two sons were corrupt and untrustworthy. He delegate, Samuel delegated some of the responsibility to those, those sons. That would be like Reverend Cross and uh, Deacon Parker delegating to me to teach Sunday school class and I'm living a raggedy life. And I'm going to sit in front of people and lead people in the wrong direction. That's, that's, uh, that's wrong. It's unjust. It's wrong for me to be doing that. Uh, if I'm not praying and I'm not walking in the same direction that my leadership is walking, as they are, as they are walking based on the word of God, I'm wrong. I need to be studying the, the Bible just about as much as Pastor Krause is or any other minister or any other deacon or any other teacher. As members of the body of Christ, we ought to be studying the word of God. It's not just left up to the pastor or the deacons or the teachers to study God's word. It's all of our responsibility so that we will know that we will know that we know. It's all of our responsibility. 
The most severe change was that this request, speaking on Israel's uh, elders uh, requesting a king to rule over them, we've heard that story also. The most severe change was that this request was a rejection of God's rule and authority over them. God permitted the fulfillment of their appeal, but warned that a king would cause more problems, that they would regret their decision. History proves that God's warnings, warning was correct. God's warnings are correct. The Bible is full of God's commands, his warnings, but he, we don't misunderstand. God is not up there just waiting to cut our heads off or, or to punish us. God loves us. He desires for us to have the best, y'all. He desires for us to have the best. But his warnings are correct. Beginning with the corrupt leadership of Saul, Israel's first king, God instituted standards, expectations, and accountability measures for their kings, judges, priests, and prophets involved in civic and religious leadership roles. Each level of leadership was to possess moral character, integrity, and commitment to God and his word. Commitment to God and his word. Integrity, character, and commitment to God's word applies to the body of Christ, not just to societal government. It applies to the body of Christ. Not only does it apply to leadership, it applies to the body of Christ. Judges were expected by God and the people to render fair judgment. Kings were to make appropriate judgments, be God's choice, and lead people to fear and reverence God. Leadership, leadership, societal and Christian or church leadership. We are supposed to lead people in the fear and reverence of God. This lesson is about, it's about, it's about civil law, but it also applies to our laws here in church. How we are to live as Christians. We are to be examples. Ethnic, cultural, and religious, religious polarization characterizes us as a nation that is traceable to ungodly leadership practices. Everybody in leadership is not godly. They're not. And that's a fact. A solution is a commitment to accept and apply God's standards for civic and religious leaders. More importantly is the realization that all leaders are accountable to him. Leadership must be aware. We cannot stand before people as God's leaders living any kind of way. That goes from the White House to the house down the street here on Martin Luther King Drive. Wherever leaders are, wherever Christians are, we cannot stand before people as God's leaders living any kind of way. This is not just for elected officials. This is for Christian believers. All who have accepted Christ as their Savior are leaders. And we've said this before. Everybody that has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you're a leader, whether we want to be or not. As part of your assignment, go ye therefore. As you learn, it doesn't mean that the day you accept the Lord that you're going to understand how to go ye therefore. It means that as you learn, you will be more, your light will get brighter and brighter. Your light will get brighter. Uh, in our biblical context, uh, about half the way down, the intent of Deuteronomy's message applied to this generation and th their future descendants. Deuteronomy was a call for Israel's total devotion to their covenant God. Total devotion to God. What do we think as human beings is going to happen to us if we give total devotion to God? Where does our mind go? Do we think 
that he's going to cause us to do something or make us go somewhere that we're not capable of going or do something we're not capable of doing? Do we think that he's going to make a fool out of us? He doesn't do that like that. He wants us to be a light to the world. A lot of us are afraid to be totally devoted to the Lord because we think we're going to have to give up something. Well, yeah, yeah, we sure do. When we go on our jobs, we give up having to uh, uh, speak our opinion about everything, but we still go. If they tell us we got 30 minutes for lunch, we spend 30 minutes. We don't spend any longer. We might want to spend longer, but we don't. We do whatever they say do. But what is it that we fear that God is going to do to us if we devote ourselves to him? I tell you what he is going to do. He's going to take some stuff out of our lives that doesn't need to be there. I'm a witness to that. He won't take all of your enjoyment away. That's not his plan. He told us we could enjoy some things here. But everything has a time and a place. Everything has a time and a place. Reverend Campbell and I enjoy music. But we know there's a time and a place for listening to it. We know. If we as human beings spend all of our time watching uh, reality TV, all of those shows, what do you think is going to happen to our mind? You'll be crazy. That's not real. If God inspires you, if the Lord and Holy Spirit inspires us to get up in the morning, and I've said this before, what is going to have more of an eternal value in our lives? Sleeping 30 more minutes in the morning or getting up and reading and studying God's word for 30 minutes? Which one has Eternal value, eternal value, eternal value. We got to think about eternal things. We do. Now, the Holy Spirit in us brings things to our remembrance about eternal things. But as human beings, we got to kind of make some decisions on our own. We got to make some decisions on our own. All righty, we're going to move on to our first outline. Secure just leaders. This will be from Deuteronomy 16, verses 18 through 20. I'm going to read uh, a little bit of both the King James Version and the NIV Version. Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with judgment. Thou shalt not wrest judgment, pervert, ju that means to pervert justice or show partiality. Do we not see that happening now? But we must not take revenge. We must not take revenge. People don't know how to deal with you. When you do not take revenge. Revenge is mine, saith the Lord. There is a judgment day coming for all of this. Thou shalt not rest judgment. Thou shalt not respect persons. Neither take a gift. Don't take a bribe. And we know that happens. We know that happens. For a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. That which is altogether just shalt thou follow, that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. I really, and this is an opinion, and my opinion is just my opinion, I cannot believe that a person that accepts a bribe or a person that is unjust is happy. I don't care. You do not have inward peace and inward happiness. Because one of the things that you're going to do is always be worried that somebody was going to find out. I did something wrong. I did something wrong. But when you get around people, you, yeah, yeah. 
alcohol is good. I'm good. But on the inside, you're torn up. No, inward peace. You can't convince me that doing something wrong gives you inward peace. Can't. And so, but anyway, moving on. A current description in our outline of a just society is one that strives to ensure prosperity for all its citizens. Also, it's, it is one where equitable wages, safe workplaces, health care are the norm and not the exception for all. A just society guarantees safe, affordable, and comfortable housing. Okay? A just society guarantees safe, affordable, and comfortable housing. Now, if the just society provides safe, affordable, comfortable housing, why do folks tear it up? Tear it up. Why do we tear up stuff? Poor don't make you nasty. Poor does not make you destructive. I grew up poor. I think I'm still poor because I don't own nothing. It's on loan from the Lord. Poor does not make you tear stuff up. If you have affordable housing, take care of it. Take care of it. In a just society, fair and unbiased judgments in judicial systems is a reality. That's in a just society. In a just society, people are fair. We're living in an unjust society. In an unjust society, whether you are just or not does not change the fairness of God's word. That don't change, and that's bad English. The fairness and the equity of God's word does not change because man perverts God's word. It don't change. You can't make, you can't do something wrong and make God's word right. You can't do it wrong and make God's word right. It is evident that we are not living in a just society because a plethora of flagrant social injustices characterizes it. Israel or the church and us, the church, are to be the example of a real just community, but its foundation was dependent on the caliber of its leadership. What kind of leaders are we? If 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 I, my life is raggedy, as Pastor Blood used to say, as a can of sauerkraut, what kind of image do I give people about Rosa Sharon? If my pastor is teaching and preaching the word of God and I'm living any kind of way, how, what kind of an image do I portray of my pastor who's a good teacher, the ministers and other people that teach in this church? What, is it, what, what does it show that about them possibly? Now they see me acting a way, well, who's, a certain way. Well, who's, who's teaching? Where's she getting that teaching from? And the first thing I say, well, you know, I, I belong to Re Rosa Sharon over there. Reverend Cross is my pastor. Really? I didn't know. Uh, and what is the expression the kids say? I didn't know y'all had it like that over there. And I'm the one wrong. Not the pastor, not those that are teaching. But I'm living the wrong kind of life. I'm portraying that you know, Rosa Sharon believes in doing just about anything over there because I saw uh, Sister Matthews doing such and such. I wonder if her pastor knows she's doing that. We got to, we, we've got to live our lives according to the word of God. And once again, God does not tell us we cannot have fun. He did not tell us that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek him first. And y'all, he will move, he will, he will bring fun to you. You don't have to go look for it. He'll bring fun to you. Sometimes I believe that's why we won't commit to the Lord because we think we won't have fun. I have a ball all the time, every day. And I sit in my house every day because of, the, because of COVID, the pandemic. I laugh in my house. I eat in my house. I listen to music in my house. When I need to go out and get something to eat, I go get something to eat. 
and I come on back in the house. Why we always got to be on the move, just moving, moving, moving. At some point, we got to stand still. As the people in the country used to say, we got to sit down. At some point in time, we got to sit down and listen to the Holy Spirit teaching us something. We got to. Because the, wor the, the noise of the world will infiltrate your spirit and you will do anything. Anything. It depends on which spirit you're listening to. And you won't know the spirit of the Lord if you don't know the word of the Lord. And if you don't know, if you don't know anything about if you, the way for, you to know, for us to know the word of the Lord, that extra 30 minutes in the morning, wake up, just start reading. Lord, what you want me to read today? I promise you, glory to God, I promise you if you ask him, what do you want me to read today? He'll take you right to it. Right to it, y'all. And it's amazing. It's amazing. He'll take you right to it. Now, Matthews don't have the answer for every single thing, but I know this is I know that's the truth. I know that's the truth. If you ask him, whatever you ask him, however he wants you to live your life, if you ask him, I promise you he will tell you. I promise you he will. And if he don't tell you, and you don't like what I said, Pastor, they can unfriend me on Facebook. Now, it'll be all right. <laughs> it'll be all right. God gave Israel, and he has given us, the church, specific instructions detailing on how to choose judges, how to choose leadership to uphold laws that ensured impartial judgments vital to a just society's maintenance. Church leadership also vital to a just church uh, society, a just church, to just church maintenance, okay? There aren't supposed to be any holy gangs in the church. No cliques in the church. We know that there are personalities. Personalities are going to be there. We all got one. We all got some good and we all got some bad. Each tribe selected judges and officers. Each auxiliary has a president, vice president. Not only was this lesson for civil law, this lesson is for leadership in the church. Okay? The judges were chosen from among a local council of leaders and officers were a form of special assistance. Pastor Cross cannot teach every single Sunday school class. He can't teach primary he can't teach the adult, junior, intermediate all on the same Sunday. So that's why we have different Sunday school teachers. And we have assistant Sunday school teachers. And we have a superintendent that takes care of the Sunday school teachers. And we have the, uh, the mission and the president of the mission. We have ushers and the president of ushers because Pastor Cross can't be the president of the ushers. And he can't be the superintendent of the Sunday school all at the same time. He can't do all of that. So as a, as a group of people, as a group of baptized, a body of baptized believers, we come together to assist in the, spread, in, in, in the spread of the gospel. We get behind our pastor, we study, we read, we listen, we pray as the church goes forward. Because it is a growing organism. It's not, the, the church is not a dead church. The word of God is not a dead word. It's not a dead word. Judges, okay, let me go back here. Open areas were available in each city inside their gates where disputes could be heard for in a public forum. According to the law, each individual had rights, and these judges were responsible for making decisions that upheld what was right for those deprived of their rights and punished the guilty. We see that now. There are those marginalized citizens. There are those that are not being treated fairly. We see that. But as a praying group of people, we're still not cowards. Because we walk and we trust the Lord. We walk in his, in his way and we trust him does not make us cowards. As a matter of fact, I think we have the power of the universe <laughs> with us. 
God himself. Judges were prohibited from perverting justice, showing partiality, or accepting bribes that may sway their decision. Under no circumstances were they to fail to adhere to God's established standards. Under no circumstances were they to fail to adhere to God's established standards of righteousness. If they had personal knowledge of individuals coming before them, that's when a judge was supposed to be, I think, supposed to do what I think they call recusing himself. Okay? Get out of the way so justice can be done. If you have, if the judge had prior knowledge, uh, if he knew the individual that was coming before his court, he had to recuse himself. I can't do this because I know of thus and thus. So I have to, I have to, I have to eliminate myself from this procedure. If they had personal knowledge of an individual coming before them, they were to consider them strangers to avoid favoritism or prejudgment. Moses summed up these instructions by emphatically commanding that righteousness be pursued. Pursue righteousness at all costs. Selected judges had to remember the weaknesses of their human nature. That's why it's not good for me to say, it ain't no way I wouldn't do that. I don't know what I may or may not do. Put in the, in the, in the right or the wrong cir uh, condition or circumstances. Yes, sir. Never, ever say, because you see somebody else doing something that's not right, that you wouldn't do it, because we might. There's a thin line, a thin line between what sinners are doing and what we're doing, and some of us doing what sinners are doing. Thin line. If God withdrew his hand, it's no telling what I'd do. Have mercy on me, Lord. Mm. And these judges, and us as, as Christians, we have to remember our own weaknesses and what we could be capable of doing when we come across someone who seems not to be as strong in the word as we are. We have to be careful of being judgmental. We have to be careful. Um... These instructions suggest two responsibilities for believers now. First of all, we need to seek God's direction for selecting leaders by adhering to the standards he has set, and the standards are the Bible. That's where the standards are. And use the power of the political process seriously when our voices determine who will or won't occupy positions in our nation's judicial system or civic authorities. Register to vote and vote. We cannot afford anymore to take the attitude of they're going to do what they want to do. Do not take that attitude. Register to vote and vote. Something as simple as coming to church meetings are important. It's important. It's important to come to church meetings. To be a part of the process, it's our job to make sure that the that the church that the church functions as it should. We need to hear and be informed. If you're not going to be here, pray for leadership, or do we want to just be mad at leadership? When something is going on in our nation's capital, are we praying for na the nation's leadership, or do we just want to be mad? Do we just want to burn something down? Do we just want to throw a brick through a window? Is that all we want? Or do we want God's will to be done? Some of us are not going to live to see justice, God's justice, come to fruition. Some of us are not going to live to see the courts treat people on an equal basis. We cannot stop praying, whether we see it or not. We, should, we can't stop praying. We can't stop doing what's right. We cannot stop trusting God. Leadership, from the White House to our house, must be praying. If they're not praying, we ought to be praying. We ought to be praying. All right, our last outline, honor just decisions. 
If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment, between blood and blood, between plea and plea, and between stroke and stroke, being matters of controversy within thy gates, then thou shalt arise and get thee up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. If, if, if there is a matter that's too hard for us to judge, pray. 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 And thou shalt come unto the priest, the Levite, and unto the judge that shall be in those days and inquire, and they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. I'm sorry. This is from Deuteronomy 17, verses 8 through 13. Deuteronomy 17, verses 8 through 13. And thou shalt do according to the sentence, which they of that place which the Lord shall choose shall show thee. And thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee, according to the sentence of the law which they shall teach thee, and according to the judgment which they shall tell thee, thou shalt do. Thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee to the right hand nor to the left. And the man that will do presumptuously and will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister there before the Lord thy God or unto the judge, even that man shall die, and thou shalt put away the evil from Israel. And all the people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously. There is a judgment day coming for those who judge unjustly. There's a judgment day coming. Wonder what a judge or an attorney or a jury would do if they really, if they had to live by the way this was done in the old days. You know, a lot of people get uh, sentenced for things they didn't do. And this lets us know that if we know that, if I know you're not guilty and I say that you are guilty and I vote that way that I should be put to death. Wonder if people would have another outlook on this. Y'all spread the word out there. Spread the word. Moses, in, in the outline, um, and we're going to get uh, try our best to get through this so that we can have our morning service in time. Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, gave him sound advice to help him handle the day-to-day -day disputes that came before him for settlement. He counseled Moses to appoint judges to handle small cases to, uh, to free him to deal with more serious ones. Now, and that's why Pastor Cross can't teach Sunday school. He can't be the leader of the ushers because he has a particular job that he has to do. And he, as a human being, he could not humanly do all of those things. So therefore, there are those that are appointed to handle things that the other matters in church. Teaching Sunday school, this doesn't mean it's a small thing. It's a big thing. That's where teaching is. That's where, where our learning is. Ushering is not a small thing. It's a big thing. Primary class teachers, not a small thing. It's a big thing. Deacons, not a small thing. It's a big thing. Because we are all involved in the furtherance of the gospel. Exceptional case, uh, I'm sorry. Now Moses directed the people to follow a similar, pat similar pattern of entering and settling in Can Canaan. Exceptional cases beyond the scope of local judges would occur. And that's where we have the establishment of the Supreme Court, the state Supreme Court, uh, uh, district Supreme Courts, all those Supreme Courts, etc. This is civil law now. These included those possessing baffling or unusual features, homicides, rights of law, and various types of assault and personal injuries. These cases were to be referred to priests and judges, judges at a higher level, most likely those serving at the tabernacle and later the temple. On further in that outline, now, we understand that Moses' instructions look forward to the time when Israel rejected God's leadership in favor of a king, and they got a king. They got Saul. They got a king, and they got Saul, and he ran them ragged. <laughs> Decisions were binding because they were based on God's standards and it made in his presence. Made in his presence. The purpose of this strict regulation was to create godly fear and respect for God as the source of justice. God is the source of justice. We, fear doesn't mean we're going to be scared that he's going to 
going to uh, uh, cause us to, to uh, have an accident and get hurt. Reverence him. Respect him. Because he always sees what we're doing. And even when we do wrong, he still loves us. And he'll whisper, my child, come back. Just come on back. Don't do that. Come back. God does not condone the actions that show partiality, pervert justice, or accept bribes in any form in legal system. God does not accept people that show partiality, pervert justice, or accept bribes. We see it going on all the time. There is a judgment day coming. For all the wrongdoing that we've seen and all the wrong that is being done, there's a judgment day coming. As God's representatives, believers have the responsibility to abide by the law. Please read Romans 13, 1 through 7. Tells us to obey the laws of the land. If the stop sign says stop, we got to stop because that's the law of the land. If the red light says law, stop, we got to stop because that's the law of the land. Well, why I got to stop? Wasn't anybody coming? Because the law of the land says when it's a red light, you got to stop. You got to stop. The law of the land, we got to obey. And we got to teach our children to obey the laws of the land. Well, I don't know why I got to do that. Because the law of the land says so. And because God holds us accountable. Well, it just don't seem right, mama, daddy. It don't seem. Just do what's right. We know what's right. And sometimes our children know what's right. But they rebel against it. We must teach our children to follow uh, the example of God's word and actively engage in the political and rich religious processes of selecting and electing leaders who will follow God's standards. Register to vote and be prayerful when you vote. Register to vote and be prayerful when you get ready to vote. In the closing thought, Believers must continue to exercise the right to elect and select people of integrity to civic and relig religious leadership positions. Some civic uh, 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 leaders will only show up at your church when it's voting time. Otherwise, you don't see them. You don't see them. Believe believers must maintain a higher standard. Believers must maintain a higher standard of obedience to God's word and to civil governments that do not conflict with his. Prior to, to elections, there, uh, are there prayer vigils held to ask God for his guidance in the vote? Probably not, but we don't know. How do we appoint our religious leaders? Get um, Vote with a spirit led hard and let God do the rest. When we get ready to vote, vote with a spirit-led heart. Uh, God expects us to join him in his work of, for social justice for all. Go to school board meetings. Start going to PTA meetings. Be involved in your children's lives. Be involved in the church. Study the word of God. And by the time we do all of that, that the Lord wants us to do, we don't have time for reality TV because we're too hot, too tired. <laughs> the housewives of Atlanta that we don't have time for that and them of New York City and all of those other places I think we need to have <laughs> the Christians of Little Rock Arkansas <laughs> see, see what we're doing okay let us not check out on righteousness let's check in on righteousness if we don't follow God's ways we can ex all we can expect is chaos that's all we can expect are we impart, impartial in our homes and our schools and our churches and, and, and workplace? Are we impartial or are we partial? Do we judge fairly? Do we treat our families fairly? Do we treat our church family fairly? Thank you all so, so much for listening this morning. Uh, we're going we're gonna to dismiss and be ready for morning service. Let's bow for just one moment. Heavenly Father, thank you this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You are welcome to come and join us here at Greater Rose of Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, 
whether it's live or online. We have our Sunday school worship service at 9 a.m. Once again, it's online or you may come in person, as well as our morning worship service at 10 a.m. You may join us once again live or online with our Facebook account. We also have our uh, midweek service on Monday. We have our morning devotional at 9 a.m online and then on wednesday we have intercessory prayer online at 12 noon and also we have our bible study on wednesday at 7 p.m which is also online you can also catch our repeats on our facebook account as well as on our youtube account once again we welcome you to join greater rosa sharon missionary baptist church What time is it? It's giving time. And God tells us why we should give and how we should give. In Malachi 3 and 10, God tells us to bring the tithe to the storehouse that his house may have meat. Simply put, that means pay your tithes to support the church. And when you support the church, you're not only helping the church, but you're helping others through the church ministries. Not only that, you will be blessed. For God also say in Malachi 3 and 10 that if you give the way he say give, he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room enough to receive. Don't you want to see the church blessed? Don't you want to be blessed? You can accomplish both by giving. Now to give to this great ministry, simply download the GiveLify app. That's G-I-V-E. L-I-F-Y. Again, that's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Go ahead and create that account. Enter the place of worship. Enter the amount you wish to give. Enter that credit card and billing information. Tap that Give Now button and smile when you do it because God loves a cheerful giver. Now, if you do not wish to use the Give Lify app, you can mail your tithes, your offering, or any donation to Greater Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, zip code 72206. Again, that's Greater Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, Zip code 72206. And remember, Greater Rosa Sharon is a 501c3 charitable organization. All your tithes, all your offering, all your donations are tax deductible. Until the next time, this is Deacon Duffy saying God bless you and keep you is my prayer.